So with that said, let me jump out of slides and give you an example of building an office ad. And I'll show you a couple different ways of doing that. The first one is here in the browser. I, I happen to be in Napa. I just went to NapaCloudApp.com. And in this case, this is that in-browser experience. I can go and say sign in. Uh, and again, all I need in order to work in Napa is some sort of Microsoft account, like a live.com or a you know outlook.com, whatever you might use to use something like, I don't know, Xbox Live. Um, same type of account works here. So Richard, is, does it require any kind of MSDN subscription? No, no, this is, there's like no cost of entry here other than just having just a simple Microsoft account. So most of the people that are, I, I find that almost every developer tends to have like, they have a Gmail account, they have some sort of Microsoft account, they kind of have all their, uh, you know, accounts covered from that standpoint. You have probably enough to just start working in Napa right now. So um, I'm here in Napa and I have, you can see I have a bunch of projects that I've already created. I can go create a new project and when I do that it's going to ask me what type of project I want to create. Is it going to be a content add-in, a task pane add-in? Do I want to create one of those mail add-ins? And uh, from there I can immediately start working in it. So let me, I'm going to go back and select one that I already created. I, in fact, this is one that I created for the Salesforce, a Salesforce workshop. Um, and so uh, if I go into this one, you can see it's basically an in-browser code editor. Now the cool thing is it's not just, you can see that it, it gives me, you know, nice uh, syntax highlighting and things like that. But also if I'm actually in the code, um, in this case it has jQuery that it's using. If I were to do a jQuery syntax here of just, um, we'll just say foo, if I put a dot here, it actually gives me full IntelliSense. It looks at what's available on a jQuery object and, and actually shows me what I can perform on here. And so it's it's a little bit better than uh, just using Notepad, but it, from here I have a lot of options like being able to, I can debug it, I can run it directly from here, I can share the project, I can export it so that I can use it in a full-fledged editor. But it really gives me a, a nice experience. So if I wanted to play this here, you can see that it's it actually will use your OneDrive to um, store the file. So it's actually taking me out to OneDrive now. And then it'll actually launch this add-in directly here in the browser. So I'll just say start. And there you can see this is a, a data export tool inside of uh, for exporting some data that's in Salesforce into my spreadsheet so I can manipulate it the way I want. So that's how easy the experience is here in Napa. Let me show you kind of more of a, a heavyweight version of development. If I wanted to actually have a much more flexibility around all the different settings, I'm going to turn to the Yeoman generator. So I'm going to open up a terminal here. Uh, if, if you're running on a PC, you just open up a, like a node. Uh, as long as you have node in your path, you can pull up any sort of command prompt. And what I'm going to do is first, let's make a, a folder for this. So I'm going to go to my projects folder. We'll go to office. And let's just do a make directory. We'll call this uh, Salesforce webinar. And we'll change directories to that. And now I'm just going to run a command that yeoman generator and I'm just going to run yo office. That's all I'm going to type in here. It's just yo office. And this is going to walk me through a bit of a wizard for what I want to, uh, how, what, do I, what type of project do I want to create. So the first thing it's going to ask me is what's the name of my project. We'll say this is Salesforce, Salesforce webinar. Um, do I want to use this folder or a different folder? I'm just going to select the default. Um, the next thing you can see here, it's actually asking me what type of office project do I want. Do I want to build a mail add-in, a task pane add-in, or a content add-in? I'm going to go with a task pane add-in. And the next thing is what technology do you want to use? And so I'll, I'll kind of zoom in on this here a little bit. Um, you can see that we'll give you just a, a bare bones HTML, CSS, and JavaScript template. You can also pick from a few different Angular template, templates. We find that AngularJS is a really popular tool to use for building these, and so 
we created a few uh, project templates that use Angular. Um, there's one that's just kind of regular Angular, and then there's one that has a what we call ADAL. It's a library for helping me authenticate to some of the Microsoft services. So uh, there's that one. And then the other option I can do is, let's say you already have a web project and it's ready to go. You're ready to automatically deploy that and make it be an add-in. One of the, the key things is you, have to, you do have to generate a manifest file, and that schema can be kind of complex. So we actually will allow you to use this Yeoman generator just to generate the manifest file. That's one of the options here that you can do when you uh, create this. Let's just go with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript version. And let's target, you can see I can use, I can do it for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Project. Let's do Word as an example here. And then it's going to basically go off and generate this project for me. Um, it's going to use a lot of tools behind the scenes like Node Package Manager and Gulp and Bower to help generate this. But the output of this is going to be basically exactly what I'd get with Visual Studio. And it's going to do the exact same things Visual Studio does for me, but I this is very lightweight. I'm just using a terminal. I didn't have to install that two gigabyte install. So this will crank away. It takes you know anywhere from about uh, depending on the speed of your internet, anywhere from like 10 to maybe 25 seconds to finish. So it looks like it's doing the last little bit. It's installing the Bower uh, client side packages, and there we go. We're done. And now I can simply open this up in any sort of code editor. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, which isn't the same as Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is, is basically the same as Atom, or it's built on top of the uh, GitHub's open source text editors. But this is a really just lightweight editor. Um, and, and if I were to go in here, you can see it has all the details for me generated already. So I have like a, a basic getting started a, a started JavaScript file. Um, it did, it pulled in some of what we call the TypeScript, TypeScript definitions for some of the libraries it references. And so that will give me a nice experience in here if, if you have an editor that supports things like uh, hints and, and IntelliSense, it's already in here. But um, you know, you can see that I have a, a script file that already references everything I need. It references Office JS. It references the Office UI fabric. I could remove that if I wanted to, but it's already referenced in here. It also generated that manifest file for me. So here's that manifest, um, and I could go and give this a description. We'll just call this a very, very cool add-in. And I'm ready to go. This app is basically done, um, and it's really simple to go out and deploy this. I simply need to go to my browser, and I want to go to my OneDrive. And if you have a Microsoft account, you have OneDrive. You just have to go to OneDrive.com. And I'm going to generate a new Word document because we built this for Word. So I'm going to go and open up Word. The other thing I want to do is I need a web server to host this, and the great thing is with the Yeoman generator, we actually bring along a, a really simple web server with that. And so I'm going to go back to my terminal, and I'm going to say gulp serve static, and that's going to launch a web server that can host this for us. And you can see here it's actually hosted at HTTPS localhost 8443. Let me just grab this here really quickly just to open it up in a browser just to make sure that that web server is indeed running. There it goes. It looks like it's good. So I'm actually ready to debug this add-in. What I'm going to do is in Word, I'm going to go up to my Insert tab, and I have this little option for um, an Office add-in. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. This is going to show me all the Office add-ins I use, and I, there's quite a few that I've used over the years, and so it's going to load a, a bunch of those. But there's this option for uploading my own. So this under this manage my add-ins, I have an option to upload my own manifest file. And in this case, I'm going to be able to go out and locate that. So let's just go to uh, let's, oh, let's go to projects. Office. There's my Salesforce webinar, and here is my manifest file. So I'm just going to grab that, open it, and say upload. 
and that's going to automatically load that now in my task pane. And it's actually fully connected here. In fact, if I were to just type my name and just highlight it, if I press my get data from selection, you can see my add-in was able to read data from the work, uh, the actual document that I'm in. I can go both directions. I can write data back to the, the document. But in this case, that's kind of end-to-end -end generating a blank project all the way to deploying and testing it inside of Office Online. That's a really great example because um, the, the, the confusing part for most people, uh, and I, I assume I'm like most people, is understanding this deployment mechanism where you've got an app running somewhere else and really all that you need to do is make the office application aware of the manifest and the manifest really drives where the application comes from. But not only that, it's like, well, how do I interact with the data? And so that is scaffolded in into almost all of the templates, I think, that um, are available for these um, kind of getting started add-ins. That's right. Cool. It's kind of like a hello world that shows you how to do some of the basic working with the, the document. Absolutely. So with that, um, that's kind of talking a little bit about the basics of building an add-in. Dave was going to, why don't you walk us through a little bit about what it would mean to start connecting and, and talking with Salesforce in one of these add-ins. Yeah, sure. So uh, let me just go ahead and bring up my presentation. Uh, there's a few considerations. So one of the things that, uh, you know, it's really um, kind of, I think, intuitive to see how you might be able to uh, get to the data in a document, for instance. I mean, that's scaffolded out for you. And then also, well, because I'm running on the web, I'm probably going to use some REST APIs to get the data from Salesforce. Um, but we, we shouldn't stop there when we're thinking about creating add-ins uh, because in addition to the development effort of uh, you know, creating our databases and our workflow rules and our business processes, we're also generating user interface, especially with Lightning components. Um, and so in thinking about these add-ins, you can actually build your add-in uh, using Lightning components. And there's a few things to think about. One is authentication. So um, everything at, behind the Salesforce cloud uh, needs to be authenticated. And this is going to be done using the web standard OAuth. Um, we have JavaScript libraries that um, you can leverage to, uh, to be able to uh, just cut and paste and basically have the OAuth dance done for you. Um, the OAuth means that you're going to need a connected app. That's no problem. I think anybody who's um, built anything external to Salesforce understands that. Uh, but the other thing that's going to be required is um, cores. And so this is uh, a way for us to be able to whitelist wh wherever you're deploying this add-in so that uh, the Salesforce cloud trusts it for um, cross-domain API calls. Um, Richard mentioned some places about uh, where you can host this. Um, I'll just reiterate the, the Napa Cloud, of course, Heroku, Azure, uh, anywhere that a web server runs. You saw him running it from a local host. And so the, the, wherever the, the web server runs, what, what web server it is, really doesn't matter. I think the key thing to understand is that you do need to have SSL and HTTPS um, enabled for that web host. And of course, uh, UI integration is going to be important as well. So here's a sample connected app. These are really easy to create inside of the force.com. Um, in this case, I've got two callback URLs, uh, one for a test version and one for the live version. Um, and then here's an example of creating a course. So if you haven't built a course entry yet, it's super simple. All you do is click the new button and then add the URL for the domain that you want to uh, be whitelisted. And then finally, in the case of the sample that I'm going to show you, um, I'm running on Heroku, and this is what my manifest looks like. And again, the key item here is the source location. Uh, in this case, it's my Heroku app called Real Estate Interest. Um, and then uh, you also have some. Uh, control over the iframe uh, that Richard mentioned. Because we're in an iframe, you need to, you, you really don't have the dynamic uh, sizing of the height of the iframe once it's already loaded. So we specify hopefully an optimum height here. 
And you can see that we've got different t uh, settings for the different devices, so tablet and, and uh, phone settings as well.